All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Unfortunately, this is not the video I wanted to make for you guys. Uh, I tried to set this up multiple, multiple times with my GoPro, and as you saw in my other video, my GoPro is a piece of crap. Um, I want to go over how simple it is to turbo an LS engine, especially in a truck engine bay. Um, inevitably somebody will pop up like i have a mazda miata and that'll never fit well you know yeah you got to get more creative it is what it is but if you're starting with a truck like me um some cars i believe these fit g bodies don't quote me on it check on the driveway engineer facebook group but uh this is a log manifold i got this one from will barnes you can find him on the driveway engineer facebook group it was 235 dollars shipped I think it was an extra 50 for the Cerakote, and then uh, the crossover was also 235 shipped, but this was like a year and a half ago, and he sent them to me, so don't quote me, check with him for the current prices. You can find them on Amazon and, and eBay and stuff like that too, but if you support Will, you know, you're supporting one of us, and he doesn't charge anymore. As a matter of fact, he's oftentimes less, so anyway, uh, I'm going to walk over here. I had this all laid out for you guys. So basically what you use is a stock truck manifold over here, right? And your exhaust goes down. It enters the crossover. It comes up here, joins this log. See how these are all swooped forward? Goes up into a merge. And there's a T4 flange. This is a GT45. It's a $160 turbo. People will tell you all kinds of shit like, oh, it's so huge and you shouldn't use it. And a 78.75 is better. It is so huge. A 78.75 is better, but it doesn't matter for me at the power level I'm doing. Um, this will make like 550, 600 tire on this combo. So it's not a big deal. They make a big deal out of the weird size flange. This is a 3.25 exhaust outlet. But all over eBay, they sell these adapters for 30 bucks, um, 30, 35 bucks. It's a 3.25 to four inch. And then you just go four to three or whatever you want to do as far as your downpipe goes. Um, they come with the band clamp you need. You know, put that shit on, go do burnouts. People act like they somehow justify spending twice as much on a 78.75 that, you know, you have to buy a, band, a downpipe V-band adapter. It is a better turbo, it'll make more boost. Uh, you can get up to, you know, 20, 21 PSI with a 78, 75. This will max out around 13, 14, which is all I'm doing. So I don't care. Um, you probably don't either, you shouldn't. I know you're all going for a thousand horsepower, but you know, it'll be fine. Um, on my turbo, when I previously had this on here with uh, truck manifolds, a log manifold that I made that was a bunch of time and effort and energy that Frankly, for 235 bucks, just buy it. Um, I welded my uh, wastegate to the housing, which this is cast steel, unlike the or cast iron, unlike the manifolds, it doesn't weld nice. Somebody on LS tested the manifolds and they are cast iron. I know, I fucking know, I don't care. The manifolds weld fine, this does not, like you would expect from cast iron. So, I'm not a metallurgist and I don't fucking care. Anyway, if you buy the crossover from Will, you get a 38 millimeter wastegate flange on it. I'm just going to block mine off. Um, and that completes your exhaust routing. This is the easiest way to do it. It's not the cheapest, but it's the easiest. Uh, T4 turbo, so you're into this for, you know, uh, let me see, 470 bucks here, another 160 here, which would be 630. Uh, and you got a turbo mounted. Next up, you gotta feed oil to it. You gotta get oil to it. You gotta get oil out of it. Uh, the way that I, if you buy one of these T4 uh, Universal Turbo, this is the one that I had for my Toyota. Actually, the one that I bought for this is on my Toyota, and this is the one for the Toyota, and it's too short. That's the gist of it. If you buy a Universal T4 Turbo Line, uh, Turbo Drain and Feed Kit, It'll come with like this 40 inch line and it's too fucking short. This is from ICT Billet. There'll be a link to it in the description. Uh, it's a little bit of money. I think it's like 20 bucks, but it's 60 inches long. It fits fine. You probably have 
This on the side of your block above your oil filter, you may have one with outlets if you have an oil cooler, if you have like an HD. Um, but this is a bypass, so oil comes in this side, it goes out that side, and it goes to the rest of the block. The oil pump on an LS is in the front. It's actually right on the front of the crank. It shoots oil up a galley along the side of the block through this into the filter and onto the rest of the oil system. So it's the perfect place to draw oil for your turbo. And people are gonna be like, it's unfiltered oil. First of all, only 10% of the oil in your engine goes through the filter. Did you know that, smarty pants? I bet you didn't. Second of all, it still gets filtered eventually anyway. That's, that's why they only filter 10% of it. Um, it's not like the same oil just keeps going in a loop and never get, it goes into the pan where it gets mixed with the filtered oil, the 10% filtered oil. Um, so from there, this is a dash four line. It'll come up. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. You can drill and tap this to an eighth NPT and put an eighth NPT to AM4 fitting on it as long as you don't block the flow here. It has to flow across. Um, I've seen people block the flow there and wreck their shit. So this one, I think ICT Billet sent me. I don't know, somebody sent it to me. Probably ICT Billet. Um, and it comes already drilled and tapped. You knew either one, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just using that because I found it on my shelf of misfit projects that never happened. So feed off the side of the block, down there by the oil filter, up over to the top of the turbo, into there, bam, we're done. Now you got an oil feed. The drain is on the bottom. I'm sorry. Drain's on the bottom. Mine is a, goes to a dash 10. Okay, and on the side of the block, you can get this from ICT Billet. There'll be a link in the description. This is an M18 by 1.5 thread with an O-ring goes right into the side of the pan where the oil level sensor went um, and has an AN10 fitting on the outside. So all you need is a couple of fittings. I use 90s because you want to come straight out tight to the block up and then you can do this one at a 45. So you need a 90 and a 45 AN10, a little bit of hose, you're good to go. People, won't that stop it from draining? No, that's not how fluid works. Um, the oil will not back up because it's above this level. Like, say this is the height of the oil pan, even though we're all screwed up on axes. So the oil's sitting up here and you're draining into it. Like, it's not gonna, it won't go above whatever the oil level is. It will sit in the hose, but as this level drops in the pan, boop, boop, this level will drop in the hose. It, it just, it works out, trust me, that's the way fluid works. If you ever played with cups in the bathtub, you know that. Um, so now you have oil. You got, you got a mounting system, you got oil. You're pretty much good to go. Uh, you're gonna need injectors. You can do decaps, um, which is a stocked injector with a cap cut off of it. You can get them flowed from somebody like Eric Durr. There's a few people out there that flow them. I think they do like $80 for a set. So a set of eight would be 80 bucks. I've always had to do more than one set to get eight that match. I flow them myself. I will link to a DIY flow tester. You can build yourself with an Arduino down below. Um, Gail Follett showed me that and he came up with the code for the Arduino. So you can do it that way or you can just get on eBay. People sell decapped injectors for 125, 150 bucks. Um, Hunter Tune sells decapped injectors, um, and they're already matched, as far as I know, and, and you can go that way. What I've done is I bought a set of 100 pounders from Snake Eater. Uh, these are like $45 a piece. Um, so they wind up being like 350 bucks for a set of eight. I bought 100 pounders because I want to have room to grow but I really do want to have room to grow. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. To run this turbo, you need about an 80 pound injector or a decap. A decap will come out around 75 pounds and that's enough to run this turbo. Um, I got 80 pounders because I really, or 100 pounders because I really will eventually go to a bigger turbo on this probably. Um, the next thing you need to know is your injector type. So trucks will typically have a multi-tech like that. Um, 
but you can also get them in EV1. If they're flex, they might be EV1. Um, and if you have like Gen 4, this is EV1. If you have Gen 4 stuff, it'll be EV6. Uh, so you need to know that before you dive in and buy your injectors. Um, I already have a 340 liter Chemso fuel pump. It probably will not quite provide enough fuel to really max this out. But it'll provide enough fuel that I don't have to worry about exploding it. Um, but I'll add a booster pump, inline booster pump. The next thing you need is a map sensor. The stock one only goes up to one bar. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 PSI. So when you talk about two bar, you're actually really talking about one bar because 14.7 plus 14.7 equals 29.4, but really boost is on top of the first 14.7. If I made that more confusing than it was when you started, I'm sorry. <laughs> but two bar means you can go up to 14.7 pounds. And if you watch my tuning video, you see that you can go off the map a little bit and it's fine. Um, but there's a, I don't know, like a half dozen different factory three bar part numbers. I have a ZR1 Corvette sensor, I think. I don't know. I have to dig in the back of my Toyota for it. But you can just, the Grand National sensor, there's a bunch of them out. There's a Cobalt sensor. I'll put a list of part numbers on the screen. I don't have them handy right now. Um, and that, that takes care of that portion of it. The next thing, last thing that you need to do is in a factory truck harness. Um, the mass airflow sensor and the intake air temperature sensor are both on this five pin plug that comes out of your air inlet box. Um, you need to peel the, mat, the intake air temperature sensor out of this. You're not gonna use it anymore. Or you're gonna use it, but you're gonna use it somewhere else. You're not gonna use the MAF anymore. If you do a typical install the way that I do. Um, so, this is from a Chevy Blazer or a Pontiac Grand Am, or there's a bunch of GM stuff that have this right in the inlet elbow, in the plastic rubber elbow, the air intake. You grind that down a little bit, and you stick it right here where the EVAP goes, and now you can tell your computer what your air, inlet air temperature is. Um, and that takes care of that. So, with all this stuff, you wind up being at about 1100 bucks. Um, you wind up with a turbo that makes about 13, 14 PSI. If you do the math, if you follow Richard Holdner's rules, you know, and it's pretty basic, it's pretty straightforward, and he's proven it again and again. If this engine makes 370 tire with no PSI, doubling the PSI, it should make 740 tire. Um, in a perfect world, that's how it would work. In reality world, it won't quite work like that, but it'll give you a, a good idea of what you're going to make. So you don't have to worry about twins and Insta Boost and all that other bullshit that people get way too hung up on. Um, also, my turbo is set up here and it's clocked. I forgot to mention this. Mine's clocked exactly the way I want it right now. But, see that? You can come in and loosen these bolts all the way around here and all the way around here and you can clock the center section, you can clock the inlet, you can clock the outlet, however you need them clocked in order to fit your setup. Um, so, you don't have to worry, like, if you put it on and your oil drain is pointed up at the sky, you can just loosen these bolts and fix that. Uh, actually, I don't necessarily know where I want the outlet to my compressor just yet. Um, I don't know if I can get a tight 90 that'll fit right through there or not. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I, I can clock that however I want, and you can clock yours however you want. So, I think that covers everything. I think that's everything you need to put a basic bitch turbo kit on your LS engine. Now, we can talk real briefly about intercoolers. Um, air to air is fine. This is a 38 millimeter wastegate that I'm probably not gonna use. The bigger the better, whatever you can fit, um, whatever you can afford. But this is a two and a half inch uh, thick and it takes two and a half inch inlet pipes. It's just an eBay special. I'll link to it below. 
Um, it'll fit behind my grill okay, and I won't have to cut into my core support much. Um, I hope. You don't have to have an intercooler. You can just run less boost or less timing or, or whatever. That's fine. There's options. It's better if you do have an intercooler, but you can totally just put this on as is and run this fucker boop, and make the boost and, and have fun. So, uh, what else? I think that's it. I think that's the basic turbo kit. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know down below. I don't know when you're going to see this thing run because I don't know when I'm going to finish it. I'm thinking about taking the intake off and shaving it and hiding the wires just to show people that it doesn't have to look like this. I just don't care that it... I wanted to show people it doesn't matter if it looks like this, but I don't think anybody... Well, some people got it. I get the comments. So, you know. Um, but yeah, I'd like to take this off. I think I'd like to take it off, shave it, clean the coil packs up, tuck the wire harness. It can just go under the intake. And people don't know that. Um, and maybe bring it back looking a little nicer in the spring. So, But yeah, I got a couple months yet to get this thing out of here. I'm not in any particular hurry. Um, I have to relocate. That bundle of lines down there is like my transmission lines and fuel lines. And it's right where my downpipe wants to go right now. So I um, haven't decided how I'm going to deal with that or if I'm going to deal with that or whatever. I could also run it that way um, past the body mount and on the outside of the frame. We'll see. I don't know if it'll get into my tire that way or not. But uh, yeah, basic turbo kit. Anybody can do it. It's not a lot of money. Somebody asked me the other day, you know, what could you do a basic kit for? I could do a basic kit for 1100 bucks or less. I could really do it for 600 if I just really, really wanted to junkyard scrounge everything and use manifolds and but when stuff like this exists and it fits your application, it's hard to ignore it uh, for, you know, 470 bucks. So anyway, let me know what you think down below. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. I'm looking forward to running this thing. Um, this one's going to run on E85. I have it locally. So I need a content sensor and uh, I have one that'll go online. But uh, yeah, let me know, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer.